We've successfully set up our database connection in the previous video. Now, let's create a database table to hold our products. Essentially, you could create your table using any SQL client tool such as PHP by admin, Tableau Plus, SQL Pro, or other tools. Although using them is more convenient, the downside is that we don't have any history for our database. So database migrations are like version control for our database. Like source code of our application, our database structure may also change during our development. We may add new table, add new column to a table, remove columns from our table, and so on. Using database migration will keep track all of changes that occurred in our database. So, by making use database migration, you don't need to remember what changes that you made in your database. And if you're working with team, then database migration allows you and team to have the same database structure so that it will prevent unwanted error during development. Basically, migrations are written as PHP classes. When we run them, they will be translated into specific dialect of the database that we're working with. We will no longer have to remember the syntax for creating tables, defining columns, or stuff like that. By using migrations, we can easily switch to the type of database vendor that we need. For example, during development, we are using MySQL database or SQLite, but in production, we can easily switch to other databases. For example, PostgreSQL, and we can switch to other databases whenever we need. In order to make the database migrations working, we need to have a special table in our database to store information about migration files that have been run. Previously, we execute this command, which basically creates a migrations table. Now let's check out our database. As you can see here, we have migrations table. If we see the structure, it has three columns, ID, migrations, and batch. As I mentioned before that this table is responsible for storing the information about migrations that have been run. The migration column stores the migration files that have been run, while the batch column store kind of numbering of the migration. So for example, when you run migration for the first time, the batch column for each migration is gonna be 1, when you run the next migration, it's gonna be 2, and so on. If we go to our editor, then open database migrations folder. Here, Laravel provides three migration files create users table, create password resets table, and create file jobs table. Note that migration file name starts with date time, it denotes when the migration was created. When we run our migration through artisan command, they will be executed sequentially from the earliest date time. So, before we make our own migration, let's run these default migration files. Let's switch to our terminal and run our migration file by saying PSP artisan migrate. As you can see, these migration files has been run. Now if we go back to our SQL client tool and see the migration stable content, here we have three records. The migration column contains all migration files and the batch column contains one. And here we'll also have other tables, users, password resets, and file jobs. All right. Let's go back to our terminal and create our own migration. Here we can say PSP artisan make migration. This command accepts one argument, which is the name of the migration that we're gonna create. Here we're gonna create a migration for products table. So here we're gonna say create products table. In the older Laravel version, you need to specify dash dash create equals table name, like so. But now we can omit this option, but make sure that 
your migration name end with underscore table name underscore table. Also note that when you're naming your table, you should write it as plural. So instead of product, you should call it as products. So that's the naming convention that you should follow when naming your table. All right, let's hit enter. Once that's done, we can go ahead and open the migration file in database migrations. And then we'll make some necessary changes. In here, we'll see two methods, up and down. Up method will get executed when we migrate our migration via PSP artisan migrate, while down method will get executed when we roll back or undo our migration. So here, in up method, we create a table. In down method, we drop the table. So basically, in done method, you're doing the opposite way. For example, in up method, you add new column, then in done method, you drop the column. Or, in up method, you rename a column from the old name to the new one, then in done method, you rename the column from the new name to the older one. So here, in up method, we're gonna create products table. And here, we'll have id column and timestamps. In the prior version, this id was written as increments id or big increments. But since Lover version 7, it replaced with a cleaner syntax. But both id or big increments does the exact same thing. We just generate a column as unsigned big integer, primary key, and order increment, if you're using MySQL. The timestamps, in plural, specify two special columns called created that and updated that. These two columns are used by Laravel Eloquent to allow the application to track when the object was created and when it was updated. Actually, before we make some necessary changes, let's try to migrate this file first. We'll then see how to roll back this and define some columns. PSP artisan migrate. Now if we see the migrations table, here we have a new record and the batch number is 2. And here we'll see products table. If we see the structure, it contains id in big integer, unsigned primary key, and then auto increment. And then we also have created that and updated that in timestamp. We can now go to our terminal and roll back the migration by saying PSP artisan migrate colon rollback. If we see the migration tables again, here we no longer see the create products table migration. If we execute this command again, now the migration table is empty. Alright, now let's define some columns in this migration. Here, we'll have name column in string, then we'll also have another column, price as integer. Now we can save this change, back to terminal, then execute PSP or just migrate again. Alright, let's check out our database. Here in migrations table, we have four records. If we see the products table, now it contains ID, name, and price. Alright, so now that we have products table in our database by making use the database migration, you can check out this link to get more detailed information about migration.